So my name is Callie. I'm a physical therapist at the Power Gym, um, and I'm also in charge of coordinating the wellness series. Today we have Shelly Hawkins-Smith, one of our own Power Gym physical therapists, talking to us about dizziness and Parkinson's. If you guys have any questions, feel free to type them in the chat as you think of them, or you're also welcome to unmute yourself and ask if you'd like to. But I'll go ahead and let Shelly take it from here. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Shelly, like Callie said. Um, I am a physical therapist. I've been in Tucson since 2003, and I've known Becky for a while. And, um, and I started doing vestibular rehab at St. Joseph's Hospital uh, 2007. I'm around there. So um, I love vestibular rehab. Dizziness patients and dizziness problems are one of my favorite things to do. So um, I've worked with Parkinson's patients quite a bit and then um, dizziness is just right in there, right along with them. So um, I hope that you enjoyed this talk and you get something out of it. I don't know if any of you have had any dizziness problems in the past. We're gonna get some specifics about different kinds of dizziness and, and way that you can categorize dizziness a little bit better. So um, please, if you have any questions, don't feel afraid to ask, just pipe up and we'll talk through. Um, I decided my son is in virtual school and um, sometimes there are some technical difficulties. So I just decided I'm just gonna talk at you guys rather than try to do a presentation because I just, sometimes I just don't rely on those presentations always working and I don't, you don't have to sit there. Um, so you're just going to hear me talk and then we'll do some participating stuff um, after a little while. Sound good? All right. So um, good. So back when I first started dizziness training, uh, we get a little bit of training in schools, but not a lot. And I started a new job at the hospital and they said, hey, do you know anything about dizziness therapy? And I said, well, just a little bit. And they said, okay, great. Well, you don't have a caseload yet. So you, we're gonna, you, this therapist is going on vacation for six weeks. So we're gonna train you. So I got like a crash course in dizziness from some really awesome, amazing therapists. And back there, I worked with some audiologists too. So it was a team of physical therapists and audiologists. And um, it was really amazing experience. Um, and I, and I really feel confident um, in assessing people with all kinds of different dizziness skills from, from that background that I have there. So um, one of the first things I want to talk about is um, dizziness itself. So just a show of hands, how many of you have, um, in the course of your lifetime, not related to PD, but just the course of your lifetime, how many of you have actually had like seen dizziness on the label of your medications for whatever it might be? Yep, 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 yep. It's it's pretty prevalent. Um, and then the question, the follow-up question is that, do you know what that means actually when they say dizziness, when it when it says dizziness on there? And it's kind of like, hmm, it's a little bit tricky because dizziness itself, the word, means a lot of different things. So um, one of the first things I want to talk to you guys about is what dizziness means and how you can, if you have dizziness how you can better communicate that to your providers to help you figure out what's causing this dizziness and get it to go away. Um, because dizziness itself is a very vague term. So let's split it up into three different categories. The first one is vertigo. So has anyone experienced vertigo, spinning sensations? Yeah, it's pretty terrible. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very intense internal sense of spinning and it's hard to figure out where the world is and how to stop the world. So that's the first category. The second category is called disequilibrium. I know it's a big long word, but basically that means that your sense of where you are in space is altered or um, a little bit obscure. You're not sure exactly where you are. If you're not spinning, you're not really having really descriptive uh, language, but you're just not sure exactly where you are all the time. So we have vertigo, disequilibrium, and then the third way to categorize dizziness is lightheadedness. Um, and that's more common in the Parkinson's population with um, hypotension where your, where your blood pressure drops. So if any of you who experienced that, you know what hypotension, that lightheaded feeling, like you feel like you might pass out. So in the world of dizziness, we have those three things that we're going to 
used to categorize it the most. So if you, if you feel like something's not quite right and you want to talk to your doctor about it, you're going to use one of those three terms to help the doctor figure out that which avenue to take to take you to try to get it to get better. Um, so dizziness, um, vertigo, equal, disequilibrium, and lightheadedness. But then we're also going to categorize that a little bit differently, talking about the tempo of it. So does it come on suddenly or does it last all day long? Is there a change in position, like standing up too quickly that, that provokes it? Or is it something like rolling over in bed or when you first go down in bed or you first sit up in the morning? Um, so trying to figure out what position change, if there is a position change related to it at all is important. And then you also want to know how long it's lasted. So if you're going to talk to a provider about dizziness or try to describe it, you also want to describe how long it's been happening. Has it been weeks? Has it been years? And then when it happens, is it just a few minutes? Is it seconds or is it hours? So splitting information up into, into different um, little segments of, of tidbits of information will help your provider figure it out more. Because dizziness is not like, um, when you have a when you have a hurt arm or hurt hip, everybody can see it, right? But when it's something that's in, it literally is inside your head. Dizziness, right? It's literally inside your head. So you are the best describer to be able to to um, lead your physician or your therapist down the avenue to get the best treatment for it. So we want to have better descriptors than just the very vague word of dizziness. Um, I don't I don't really like that word. We use it a lot, but as soon as someone tells me they have dizziness, I immediately go into my, my spiel about, okay, well, let's talk about it more. So if you're prepared for that, you'll be ready to be able to um, lead your, your provider into better um, ways to heal you. Okay, so let's talk about this, the, um, the, the balancing system, the systems that are involved for balance and where we are in space and how we know where we are in space. And there are three of those as well. So the first one is vision. And your vision is telling you where you are in relation to the world um, and the, the, the gravity. So it's telling you like, where's the horizon line and how upright am I or am I tilted and compared to horizon. So vision is very important. We also use the vestibular system. We're gonna get more into the vestibular system in a little bit, but the vestibular system is your inner ear. And it tells you where your body is, where your head is in space related to gravity, which is very, very important. And then the third system that tells you where your body is in space is your, it's called somatosensation. sensation. Um, and it's the sense is coming in for balance. It's primarily for your feet. So the, the sensation of, is the ground hard? Is it soft? Is it rough? Is it squishy? Is it slick? Um, and you want to feel what's going on underneath the ground. Is it tilted? And then your, your feet send that information up to your head to tell your body how to stay balanced in that particular situation underneath your, underneath your body. So we use our vision, we use our vestibular system, and we use our somatic sensation to tell your body where you are in space. I think it's very, our bodies are so amazing in how much they process all this information. Um, and it's really important that we use all of those systems the best that we can so that you're giving your body the best opportunity that you can to stay upright and to not have any falls. So um, now we'll talk a little bit more about the vestibular system. Since we're talking about dizziness and um, in this case, mainly vertigo um, or disequilibrium, um, I want you to know a little bit more about the vestibular system. So I have my ear. Every good vestibular, it's upside down. Every good vestibular system therapist is gonna have a, an ear at their house. I don't know why, but it's just something I have laying around the house. So um, we all have two of these tiny little organs. It's the blue organ right in there. You have one on the right side and you have one on the left side inside your inner ear. I think they are fascinating. So um, you can see these little circles. There are three of these little circles right inside these loops. Those are called the semicircular canals. They have fluid, a, a really thick kind of viscous fluid on the inside of them. And each one of them has a little um, nerve. It's kind of like a hair that kind of flows inside that fluid. 
So if you move your head, I'm going to move this semicircular canal so it's right in the plane with the camera. If I move it like that, my head in this direction, that is getting optimally stimulated so that that little hair is flowing in that fluid. And that's how your head knows that you're tilting in that direction. So we have one, it's moving in a horizontal plane this way, which you can kind of see is right there. And then there's another one that's tilting over here. So it's anterior, posterior, and horizontal semicircular canals. Um, and then down here, I'm gonna show you from the back, there's a bulkier area right back here. And that has these two little organs in call, called the saccule and the utricle. Um, my best comparison for people who are non-medical is to compare them to a jello mold with fruit on the top. So there's one that's kind of oriented vertically and one that's oriented sort of horizontally. And they have the, the they're actually little crystals. So you actually do have like crystals in your head, little tiny, tiny, tiny little rocks and crystals inside your head. And they sit on top of these, this jello mold. And from coming up from the inside are little nerve fibers. They sit embedded inside this gelatinous material. So when you are accelerating or decelerating horizontally or vertically, like an elevator, an escalator, you're a passenger in a car, um, if you're the passenger, how did you know that you moved, right? Your foot's not on the gas or the, the brake pedal, but somehow you could sense that your body was going faster or slower. It's all because of these tiny little crystals. I mean, isn't that amazing? Like they, they really serve a really amazing purpose. So um, that's the saccule and the utricle inside the inner ear system. And then we have these semicircular canals. This, this part, this snail looking part in the back is involved in hearing. Um, I guess I should orient you with the whole ear. So here's the ear and the ear canal. So that's the outer external ear. Here's your eardrum, that little gray spot right there. And inside there, you see those white things right there. Those are ear, the bones inside your ear, the tiniest bones in your body. And they vibrate to help you hear. That's the middle ear space right inside that eardrum. So if your kids or grandkids or you as a child had lots of ear infections, um, that when they looked inside the ear and they could see fluid behind the eardrum, this is the middle ear space where, where that is. So this, all of this big white um, spongy looking material is the bone, that's actually your skull. So this um, vestibular system, the organ is actually embedded, there's skull on the top of it too. So it's embedded, the whole organ is embedded inside bone. Um, so that's, that's where the system is and that's a little bit more about what it does. This whole thing fits inside the size of a dime. It's tiny, I, which I think is just fascinating. It tells us so much information about where we are in space, yet all of this is, it would fit inside a dime. It's just miraculous how much our bodies work. So any questions about vestibular system? It's probably more than you ever wanted to know, but if someone after ever asks you if you have rocks in your head, you can say, yes, you do. You do in fact have rocks inside your head. Okay, so that's your vestibular system. Now, the next question is when there's a, if it's just vestibular in nature, what happens when something goes wrong? Um, there are two main things that I wanna tell you about that are, they're not really specific to Parkinson's, they're just specific to, to anyone. Um, they're a little bit more prevalent with age, starting from anywhere in the, the 30s, mid 30s to 40s, and then they get a little more prevalent as people get older. But the two things I wanted to talk to you about, because you may have had them yourselves, or known someone who had them. The first one is called benign positional vertigo. B, it's BPPV, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo. That's the positional vertigo where people lay down and their head spins, 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 spins. Um, and then the other one is called a vestibular neuronitis, which is in, an infection of the nerve that goes, the nerve here that goes to that inner ear organ. Um, so let's talk first about BPPV. Has anyone heard of BPPV? Vertigo? No? Okay. So, okay, good. A few of you've had. Um, it's a terrible feeling. Um, it's really, really intense vertigo. So what happens with BPPV is those little crystals that belong in the saccule or utricle, 
um, sometimes they can get loose. So they, they only live like about a day. They, they don't eat, there, there are hundreds of them inside your inner ear organ. Um, they don't live very long. They, they float up to the top and they do serve their fruit on the jello mold um, job up there. And then they dissolve and they, they're constantly being created and dissolved. But if there's one or a few of them up on the top that are kind of loose, what most frequently happens is you're in bed, you wake up in the morning and you roll over and you're getting ready to get out of bed. You roll over and you get this, whoa, this super intense spinning vertigo sensation. Usually it lasts less than one or two minutes. So most of the time it's just seconds. But what happens is one of those little, some of those crystals get knocked loose and they get stuck inside one of these semicircular canals, the canals where it's all it's supposed to be that's in there is the fluid and the little nerve fiber. But if you get one of those little crystals floating around in there causing mischief and mayhem, every time you move your head in that particular direction that causes the fluid to move in that semicircular canal, you get this extra sense of movement. And you've got one organ on the right side and you got one organ on the left side. So if the right side is saying, oh my gosh, I'm moving and the left side says, no, you're not, you really, really spin, 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 spin. So um, that's benign positional vertigo. It, um, it doesn't, the, the vertigo itself doesn't last very long. And, and we'll talk about what we do for treatments of that later. Um, but most commonly it happens when people are getting out of bed in the morning or tilting over to get something. And that, that movement is just enough to knock one of those little crystals loose. Um, the other most common is called the vestibular neuronitis and that's the infection. So that one, um, it's actually a herpes um, virus uh, that, that attaches onto that vestibular nerve. And so it, it again is a sudden onset. Somebody suddenly feels a lot of, of nausea, vertigo, sometimes they throw up. And that one usually lasts for hours or days. That one is usually enough to take people into the hospital for that one. Um, and so we have treatments that we do for both of those. So those are the two most common. Um, they're not really, they're not specific. There's no tie with either one of those, particularly with Parkinson's, but I want you to know what they are because both of them cause true vertigo. With Parkinson's, you're gonna feel more of a disequilibrium sensation associated with Parkinson's where you just kind of like, just, just don't quite feel right. You don't, not sure exactly where you are in space um, or that lightheaded sensation. But if you should get this intense vertigo, spin, 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 spin in your head, um, there are, a, they are those two things, the benign positional vertigo and the vestibular neuronitis are both actually pretty common. So um, it would be something you'd want to talk to your doctor about. And there are physical therapists out there that can help you out when you get, when, when you have your treatments. Um, so the way you, we treat, we'll, we'll start with those treatments and then we're gonna talk about treatment for other um, disequilibrium and the lightheadedness types of sensations. So with the BPPV, the crystals in your head, um, the physical therapists or the doctors sometimes too, we have different positioning maneuvers, but we'll do, we have someone like you're sitting on a bed and you lay back quickly onto your back with your head turned a certain direction. And we are really mean, we're cruel, cruel people because what we're trying to do is put your head in the position that's gonna cause that little free floating crystal to move the most that it possibly can, which means you are gonna feel terrible. But um, when, but so I told you we're really mean, but when we get that to happen, um, we can see it, there's this really cool reflex that it, uh, it causes your eyes to twitch so it's like the whole, the whole experience, if you were looking at it from like a, a fly on the wall, you'd be like, man, that therapist is crazy. Cause she's like staring at this person, this poor person's eyeballs right after she made her, like she made the person spin and feel like they're going to throw up. Like what kind of demented um, therapist would ever want to do this sort of thing. But um, once those, once that little crystal moves and it stimulates that little inner ear organ, the eyes do this really fast twitching movement. So we watch your eyes and see your eyes move. And depending on which direction your eyes are moving, that tells us which, and, and which position we put your head in, it tells us which um, canal of the three on the right side or the three on the left side, which one is involved. And then we could do, it's a very, actually a very simple maneuver on the bed where we're just rolling you, rolling your head and then your body into certain positions to get that little crystal to follow that loop 
90 degrees at a time to get it to follow that loop that dump back into where it belongs. Sometimes it takes a few sessions to get it to dump, to get it back where it needs to be, but it's very effective type of treatment. Um, and then for the neuronitis, for the, the inner ear infection, um, sometimes what, what ends up happening is that you get uh, damage to the inner ear organ from all the inflammation at the inner ear, you get damage there. So um, oftentimes you'll get referred to a, um, an audiologist that do like a balancing clinic where they do specialized testing of the inner ear organs and they can test to see if there's been damage there. And then you get sent to the physical therapist who does certain head movements, eye movements to try to get your head um, that we can't fix damage that happens to the inner ear, but the brain is so fascinating and it's so quick to respond that it learns very quickly how to adjust and adapt to one side working um, less efficiently than the other side. It's really remarkable how well it works. So um, the, that's what we do for, for the vestibular neuronitis. And we're gonna try a few of those exercises later just for fun. Um, if you, has anyone ever had a referral to a balance clinic to have their, their ears, the function of the vestibular system tested? Anyone, anyone? No, okay. So there are a few clinics in town that do them. And actually, um, when I was over at St. Joseph's, um, Cynthia Reed, if she's any of your neurologists, she would actually send people to us over at St. Joe's quite a bit to have some of the tests, some of the vestibular function testing done, just to see what was going on with their vestibular systems for balancing. Um, so if your balance is really, really something um, of a big problem for you, it it could be something to ask your physician about to get referred over to see if there's something going on with your vestibular system. So what they do at the balancing centers, um, they, they have an audiologist test because they're all tied in together. They have an audio, audiologist test your hearing. Um, and then they also do these tests, again, torturous people that want to do this sort of thing. Um, they there's one that you stand in a machine, you're on a very sophisticated platform. It's called a computerized dynamic posturography. And the platform, you're, you're tied into like a, a harness, so you can't fall. And the platform itself, the ground will move, like shift forward or backward quickly to test your reflexes, or it will tilt forward or backward to test your reflexes that direction. The background is this like kind of a wild mountainy looking, cartoony mountainy looking background and it takes up your entire visual field. So the background will actually move sometimes. So we're looking, so you're looking to see how well your balance system, um, you can feel the ground and be aware where you are in space even if the vision is moving around you, which is really pretty crazy. And then um, you do some things with your eyes open and your eyes closed in this CDP um, posturography machine. And then they also do these tests for your inner ear function, the balancing organ function. They take either cold water or cold air, like a little hose, and um, they, they put it into your ear. So it's going inside your ear, the, out to the ear canal, and it goes, so the hose is pushing either the water or the air in, and it bounces off that ear drum and then it comes out. So they hold your head kind of like tilted. So it's pushing it in, it goes out and it's like dumping down all at the same time. And then what it does, because it's colder than your body temperature, it changes the pressure inside in the middle ear space. And because of that, it stimulates one of those vestibular organs. It's just fascinating how it works. So then much like the physical therapists when they test for VPPV, it causes this really, really intense vertigo. Spin, 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 spin. And you're wearing these really funky goggles that have cameras inside. So they're watching your eyes do that twitching. And then the camera system measures how fast your eyes move. And they do it to the right side. And then just as you start to recover and feel like, okay, the world is okay, I'm not moving. Then they have you flip over and do it on the other side. They're really cruel people. But they look to compare to see how well you're doing on the, how, how the right side organ compares to the left side organ and if there has been any damage. Um, so, so that's what they do for the vestibular, the neuronitis. And then there's also another test they do with these little electrodes that they connect electrodes to um, this neck muscle that sticks out right here. And they, and they, there's this little like auditory clicking sound. And then, uh, 
it's really cool. It makes that there's a reflex between the ear and this muscle in your neck that helps you know where your body is in space and correct where your head position is. So they're testing to see how that reflex goes between your inner ear organ and your neck muscles. So all of that information, they put it together. If you've had, a, if you have a serious problem with your equilibrium, they really can hone in to say, okay, how are we doing with your balancing, your actual function of your balancing organ? And then that helps your physical therapist know, okay, is your balancing organ working well? Is there a deficit there? And then, um, then we can go on from there and, and make other decisions for our treatments based on how well your systems are working. So that's vestibular testing. And then, um, so the other balancing system, the other balancing problems and systems that we might have people referred for would be the, the generalized disequilibrium that just sense like something's just off in my head, off in my balance system. I don't quite know where I am in space. So as a physical therapist, um, we're going to do some bedside testing, some other bedside testing to see if you haven't had the vestibular function test done with audiologists, we could do some bedside tests to see how well your inner ear organ is working. But then we can also um, do some standing. Um, okay. Um, we can also do some standing where you're just um, standing with your eyes closed. How well are you balancing that way? Um, do you know where your body is in space when your eyes are closed? If you're, if you're walking with your head moving around, do you know where you are in space? So we do a lot of testing to see if you actually functionally can, can assess where your body is in space and keep you up, keep yourself upright. Um, and then also do some testing for your, your sensation on your feet. So using sharp objects on your, on your, the soles of your feet, how well are you feeling the ground? Um, do you, um, do you sense if something is dull? Do you sense if something is sharp? Do you, do you have, can you have deep pressure sensation? I once worked with a woman who, um, she had a peripheral neuropathy from diabetes, but she actually had a, a writing pen. It was inside her shoe and her sensation on her feet was so severely impaired. She didn't know that this, this pen was inside her shoe. So if you can imagine if your sensation is, is affected that way, um, we need to test it as the medical providers. We need to test it so that we know like, okay, what are we dealing with in terms of how well your, your body is telling you where you are in space? Um, and then, and we need to make sure that you know too, if, you, if you're really not feeling the ground very well, um, then we need to make sure that you know that so you can help to keep yourself safe too. So those are the sorts of things that we look at from a physical therapy perspective and a team perspective when we're talking about the balancing systems. Um, does anybody have any questions about those? I see one comment here. Let me read that. So, so okay, some days I feel generally weak and when standing or moving around the kitchen, it feels as though one side of my visual field is slow and has to catch up when I move sideways and change my gaze. What is that? Is that disequilibrium? So that's a great question. Um, so that would be something that we could do testing on. So, so there are different um, ocular motor. So there's the vestibular ocular reflex, which I'm gonna talk to you about in a little bit, which is a, a reflex between your eyes and your inner ears. Um, and that one is not necessarily related to Parkinson's. Um, but that's if you have an impairment, either the benign positional vertigo or the inner ear um, infection or something that caused a weakness on one side, that can make this vestibular ocular reflex weak. But there are other visual um, there, um, functions. One of them is called a saccade where you're looking at two objects and your eyes, let me get closer so you can see my eyes. Um, your eyes are bouncing back and forth between two objects. And that sounds a little bit more like what you're describing there. Um, when you're, it, if you move sideways, it sounds a little bit more like that. That one actually can be impaired with, with Parkinson's. We know that, um, that saccade can be impaired with, with Parkinson's. But, but certainly if you feel like one side of your visual field is slow and you have to catch up when you're moving sideways, that absolutely can be with your vestibular ocular reflex as well. So that may be something that it, that it would be prudent to see 
um, a balancing, go to a balancing center or the audiology to, to have them do that vis the vestibular function test to see if there's something going on with, with one inner ear or the other. Absolutely. Did that answer your question? Does anybody else have a question about? Um, okay, good. <laughs> anybody else have a question about what we've talked about so far? No? Okay, good. I've got my little notes here so I don't forget things because I want to make sure I talk about all the stuff I wanted to tell you. Um, okay, so now let's talk about some of these vestibular exercises that we can do. So the first one is called the vestibular ocular reflex. Now again, the balancing system, like our brains, our bodies, I just think they're so amazing and so fascinating. So we're going to go back to my model here because I love my little model. Um, each one of these little inner ear semicircular canals has a reflexive pathway that goes from here. So it senses movement. It goes to into the brain stem and then it is connected to, you know, you have little eyeball muscles. There are six little eyeball muscles attached to each eyeball and they help to move your eyes all over the place. So each one of these little semicircular canals has a connection to some of those eyeball muscles, which is just like, wow, it's so cool. There's this neur neuron connection to these eyeball muscles. So if you move your head, um, if, if I'm talking to you guys and I suddenly move my head, my, but I wanna keep engaged with you, my eyes quickly like rotated inside my head so I could stay focused on you. So if you if I were to draw like a line over the center of my eyeballs and I turn my head, you can see that the eyeballs actually, they actually shifted position so that they could stay focused on you. And if it happens really, really quickly, that's because of this reflexive um, pathway. If there's an impairment with this reflexive pathway, what the world looks like, it's a big long word, word called oscillopsia, but what it looks like is, um, if you're taking a home video, like let's talk about home videos from in the 80s and 90s when the when the videos weren't so smart and you're like walking and you see this, right? Um, that's what home videos looked like way back then. That's what, that's what the whole world looks like if this reflex is impaired. So with the reflex, it's, it's there all the time and it's helping to keep your, your gaze stable and then your visual field, your visual targets stable even though your head is moving a little bit. So when you quickly move your head, um, when you're walking, just a simple walk or a run, it helps it's that your eyes are constantly, your eyeballs are constantly shifted in, in different planes of movement according to what this vestibular organ is sensing so that you can keep your head still. It's just fascinating. So if something is off on there, um, then we do exercises where we practice shaking our heads back and forth and back and forth, like we're saying, no, 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 no. To look at a target, to retrain the brain, how to keep a, a target in focus again. So now you guys get to do an exercise, okay? So here is a letter A for you. I'm gonna move it down so I can kind of see you. So what I want you to do is just, so keep your eyes on the A, try to keep it clear and move your heads back and forth like you're saying, no, no, no. And it's gotta be pretty small, like less than 45 degrees to each side. No, no, no. Okay, hopefully the A is staying pretty clear for you as you're rotating your head back and forth. No, no, no. Okay, so now try yes, yes, yes. Okay, good. So that's, so this is the vestibular ocular reflex, VOR training. Now I have a metronome. I'm going to play a little metronome for you, which I know if you have been going to therapy at the power gym, you are very well um, familiar with metronomes, but we also use them in vestibular rehab a lot. Okay, can you hear it? Okay, so move your head every time you hear a beat. Everybody good? Okay. So that's a pretty slow speed for a VOR. Now we're gonna move it faster. Okay. Okay, give yourselves a little break. I'm gonna adjust the speed. Now I'm gonna show you how fast 
we want that reflex to work ideally. Okay, everybody ready? Can you do it? It's pretty, oh, you can't hear it? No? Yeah, okay, try now. Okay, pretty fast, huh? <laughs> Is that making you dizzy? <laughs> So, um, so that, that would be like working, if you're working with a physical therapist and we identified that there was a problem, that would be like the type of speed that we would be attaining to get to. Um, and then we, we make it even more challenging. So right now you're all sitting, which is good. I mean, for, for doing this program at home, um, I went, because you don't have anybody there with you to, to catch you or to tell you if something's going on, I want you to be safe. But in the clinic, we would progress the speed and you would be sitting and then work on doing it standing, work on doing it with standing with your feet together or standing on a soft surface, like a piece of foam um, while you're walking, doing a reflex while you're walking forwards or backwards, different ways to really progress it, to make it so that that vestibular ocular reflex, it's called a VOR, is really, really good challenged. So that is a VOR exercise for one of the things that we do for um, physical therapy. Now let me, there's one more comment, let me read that. I notice when I'm turning around, especially in close quarters, I have to move slowly to allow my vision and balance to catch up. Is that something I should be concerned about or have evaluated? Um, yes, I think it would, it would be something to, to certainly, if you're seeing a physical therapist, I would say that's definitely something to talk to your physical therapist about first. And they could, if you're actively in, in therapy, um, to look to see how well your, your vision system is accommodating to body movements and head movements. So, um, some of those exercises like this saccade one where we're going back and forth, or there's a cancellation one where you're um, moving your head, you're looking at a target and you're moving your head side to side um, to see if your, your balance, the way that your brain is processing balance and the, the information coming in from your inner ears and how it communicates with your eyes, if there's an impairment at all, because that can be retrained. Um, and so I think that would be, that would be a good idea to have um, someone talk to you about it because, um, yeah, I mean, if you like, if we think back to the analogy of the, um, of walking around with the camera, uh, the 1980s on your shoulder video camera, um, if you, if that's your world that you're seeing that the, the world is not real stable when you're moving, no wonder you're not gonna, your balance is, is certainly not going to be great and you're going to be at a fall risk that's for sure so if, if it's something that's problematic then i would definitely get it checked out does that answer a question okay any other questions on that exercise the vestibular ocular it's kind of fun huh <laughs> shaking let me you can all shake your heads no 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 <laughs> okay so um let's talk about okay so um, okay, let's do a little bit of exercises to get you going and get you moving a little bit. So we're going to do a reintegration to kind of train you and teach you about balance your balancing systems and have you just work on your awareness of your systems. Okay, so, so let's just imagine we're just going to use some imagery for right now. So you're just you're sitting. Think about putting your feet flat on the ground so you can feel the ground underneath you. Um, and make sure you've got good contact with your feet on the ground. And then when you're ready, I want you to close your eyes. And if you can, um, kind of sit upright away from the backrest so that you're not getting that um, tactile information from, from the backrest so that your back, your muscles actually have to work to support you. So now close your eyes. So now we have somatic sensation from your, from your joints and your, your skin. And then you have your vestibular system, but you've taken out the visual input. So feel where your body is in space. And I want you to, to just kind of be aware if you're leaning or if you're upright. I want you to think about if you are, um, if, if you feel like you're moving or if you feel like you're steady. 
Feel the steady seat underneath you and the steady floor underneath you. And just pay attention to where your body is in space and the information that you've got coming in to tell you where your body is in space. Okay, so now keep your eyes closed and imagine that you're either in a train or a moving car as a passenger. You're not driving with your eyes closed. So imagine that feeling of going, let's say going down like Grant's Road at rush hour. Think about that, like your driver is shifting from, like a teenage driver shifting from one lane to the other and then stopping and starting along with traffic in every direction. Okay, can you feel it, the movement? And then also think about what it would feel like if you were just on I-10, there are no cars around, you're just cruising at 80 miles an hour, you're just cruising. You don't really feel a lot of movement there besides a little vibration, but you know that you're moving. Okay, so now you can open your eyes. So we just worked on just, just being aware of your where your body is in space. So what your vestibular system is telling you about your orientation with gravity, and then what your somatic sensation is telling you about what your orientation is with the ground underneath you. Okay, so now let's try again. But this time, think about being in a fun house back when, I don't know, I don't even know when, they, when they're going to open fun houses again. But let's say you're walking in a fun house and you've got one of those, those rooms that it's like the black and white stripes and they're like circling around the platform and you have to walk down the center and you've got that rotating tube around you. Everybody know what I'm talking about? Okay, so put yourself in the middle of it. So let's close your eyes again, just so you can take out, take out your room. So you are, you're there, you're standing in front of it and you're thinking, oh great, I have to walk through this thing. Now take a few steps forward, imagining that that, that tube is rotating clockwise. Okay, so it's going pretty fast clockwise. Can you feel it already that your body is starting to tilt a little bit? Like you're trying to fight where your body is in space? Like now use some, use some visual imagery and start walking forward and, and use that imagination that you're imagining that, that that background, it's a stripy background and it's rotating clockwise all the way around you, right? Can you, you can open your eyes now, to, but could you feel it? Could you, could you feel your body like starting to fight where you were in space? I can feel it. <laughs> so in order for you and your super smart brain to get from the beginning of that room to the far end of that room, you you have to be able to shift your brain has to be able to shift which information it's actually processing and it has to say okay visually this is messing with me i got to cut out this vision otherwise i'm never going to get across the room so your so your vestibular system telling you where your orientation is with gravity your brain has to shift and reweigh which information is coming in and it has to say you know what I can't rely on my vision right now. I have to use my vestibular system instead. So my vestibular system is going to tell me, yes, I'm upright. And oh my gosh, I'm starting to lean because I think that I'm tilting with this vision, but nope, I got to get myself back up, right? And then you're going to rely on your feet. Hopefully that fun house is not messing with you and making a soft surface underneath you. Hopefully it's hard. So you're walking on a hard surface and you're getting this vibration and this firm feeling coming up through your joints and up through your feet to tell you where you are in space too. So it's really, it's pretty neat how your body's, your brain will shift gears between one sensory system and the other, depending on what your environment is. Now let's do one more um, imagery about just kind of training you where your body is in space. And this time we're going to think about being on, um, so you've got a, a ceiling fan or like a recessed light above your bed. And you're staying, it's either your bedroom or somebody else's bedroom, but they have one of those like super soft mattresses that you sink into. And this, this mattress is so soft, it's got a big foam overlay that's like, you just sink into this really, really, really soft mattress. So, but you have to stand on that soft mattress to be able to reach up to get to that light bulb up there. Can everybody feel it? Can you feel anything in your feet? No, it's like you're like on a cloud, like you've got no input coming in from your feet whatsoever. So, so you're standing on the super soft and so you're kind of like wobbling because you can't feel what's going on underneath you and the, and the surface is really um, compliant. It's not, 
it's not a solid surface. And then, um, so you have to shift gears and use your visual system to like fixate. Okay, there's a light bulb, I see it. And then your inner ear system is telling you, okay, like you, you might have your head facing forward and then your head tilts back. So now your vestibular system has to say, okay, this is where I am in space. I know where I am in space. And if I start, if my, my feet on this silly soft mattress start to tilt my body over here, my vestibular system is going to catch it and say, oh, you're starting to tilt. You got to come back over this way again. Okay. So everybody feel yourself on the mattress. Now, uh, so tilt your head back. So like you're looking at that light bulb. Now close your eyes. You're on the mattress. Your eyes are closed. Where are you in space? <laughs> Does anybody feel themselves falling? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so, okay. You can open your eyes. But this is, this is what our brains do. This is what our bodies do naturally, normally to shift back and forth, depending on what our environment is. It's really, really fascinating to me, but it's really important for all of us to be aware of as providers who work with people who have falls, as well as um, people who are at risk of falls. We need to be very, very aware of how our bodies work and where these, how our systems shift back and forth in, in a normal circumstance to which between for your brain reweighs which information is most reliable and which one it needs. And then we need to be aware if someone is at risk for falls because of X, Y, or Z, it's just predisposes them for being at risk for falls. How can we help to make it so that you are going to use your systems to the, the, the systems that are functioning? How can you use them to the best of your abilities? So pretty fascinating stuff, right? Um, I, I really love to use that visual imagery because it helps you kind of like feel where you are in space. So now let's try one where we're actually um, doing some standing or sitting, depending on what you feel most comfortable with, okay? Um, if you feel like, if your balance is pretty good and you feel like you're okay to stand, then um, go ahead and stand up. If you wanna do it sitting though, that's fine too. If you're standing, you might want to start with holding on to like your the the chair you were just on, or just like lightly touch it if you need to. So, if you're sitting, just stay comfortable where you are. Try to keep your back off the backrest so that you're you again have to use your postural muscles to keep you upright. If you're standing, keep your feet apart. That way, you're in the safest position. Okay, so what I want you to do is we're going to try the vestibular ocular reflex again. So. Find something pointed, you can be the camera, like where you're looking at, at, at me, or you could find something just straight in front of you uh, and fixate your gaze on something that's not moving and then move your head back and forth like you're saying no. And then try it moving your head up and down, yes. So you may feel that when you first start to move your head um, that you, you start to shift a little bit on top of your feet, like your ankles rock just a little bit. And then as you go, hopefully your system accommodates and it's, you feel a little bit less of that movement. So if you're standing, now try it, put your feet a little closer together, either where they're touching or they're like just two or three inches apart. And then try that again. So try your nose, no, 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 no. And then shift and try it, yes, 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 yes. Can you feel any difference if you're standing, if you heard your feet closer together with it, your body has to work a little bit harder to, to keep your, your system upright? It's, it's a little bit, yeah, yeah, you have to work a little bit harder. Okay, so that was using that, that vestibular ocular reflex between those semicircular canals and then they're sending that reflex to your eyes. It's also working your vestibular spinal system a little bit. But so now let's do one that's just for your spinal system. So this time, let's, if you're standing, move your feet back apart again. If you're sitting, just again, keep your back off the backrest. And this time what I want you to do is to close your eyes. If you're standing, make sure you feel like you're, you're safe and you're, you're stable. And then slowly turn your head to look over your right, one of your shoulders. Turn your chin towards your shoulder. You don't have to go to the extreme of your range of motion, but go pretty far. And then slowly bring your head over the other direction. And just kind of slowly move your head back and forth from right side to the left side. 
And you may be able to feel if you're really in tune with what your body is telling you and what you feel, you may feel um, some extra movement underneath your feet, whether where your toes or your ankles are kind of working hard to keep you stable. You may feel stimulation along your, your erector muscles along the back and the center of your right near your spine. You may feel them kind of firing up one, one side or the other, depending on how you're moving your head. So this is working on your vestibular spinal system. So there's the reflex between your inner ears and your eyes. And there's also a reflex that goes down to these, um, the extensor muscles along your body that helps you stay upright. And it shifts depending on which direction you move your head. It shifts to stimulate either the right side of the body or the left side extensors to help you stay stable. It's really pretty fascinating too how that one works. So you can, if you feel comfortable with that one with your feet apart, then you can move your feet together. And then try that one again, moving your head so that your chin is going towards one shoulder and then towards the other. I'm gonna watch you guys how you're doing here. Little bit of a wobble feeling, hopefully not too much, but you feel it working. Yeah, <laughs> good. I, I think these exercises are really great. And we, um, we can progress these exercises, these vestibular spinal exercises. If we were to do an exercise like this in the clinic, and um, number one, if you were just standing with your feet apart and you closed your eyes and you started to fall kind of like pretty quickly, we would be able to tell that, um, so when your brain has to shift gears between one system and the other, it's not wanting to, to rely on that vestibular system. So when we cut the vision out and you have to use your, your feet and your inner ears that you really, you're not, you're not shifting gears very well and relying on that information. So we would do exercises like this specifically just to stimulate your inner ear system so that you are um, having an increased awareness and an increased ability to shift back and forth to use that system better, which is, it's a pretty good and important thing to do. In the power gym, if you're doing exercises, which we will get to in a little bit, um, well, you can actually just, you can do power moves with your eyes closed. Ah, so fun. Um, so, but then you're just, you're forcing your brain to use your inner ear system, which is really, really good because it helps you know where you are if it's dark. Um, like a, a, I have to get up myself to go to the bathroom sometimes at night and I don't like to turn on the light because it wakes me up. And I am a physical therapist who tells every one of my patients, turn on the light when you get up or use a, flash, use a flashlight or use a nightlight because you're groggy and you don't want to do it. But I, I don't want to turn on the light. But anyway, um, but if you don't, if you're not using that inner ear system very well, when you start and you get up and you're walking at night, you really could be very apt to lose your balance. So we want to work on that to get that better. If you, if you do notice that that's something that you have a hard time with when you get up or if you're out to dinner at night um, or before COVID happened and you were out to dinner at night and you came back in and um, it's dark and you're walking up your front stairs or your front and you notice that you're not balancing very well, talk to your physical therapist about it so you can make sure that you can retrain that system so you can work on it better. Okay, any questions on those? No? Okay. Um, so let's, let's try one more standing exercise. Um, and this one is just for your somatic sensation, which is just your sensation coming in through your feet. So keep your feet apart and you can do this sitting on a chair too. You don't have to stand. If you're sitting, you're just going to be shifting your weight a lot. So what I want you to do is to feel right now, just kind of like tap your toes or wiggle your feet. You can go up and down on your toes a little bit. Just increase your awareness of what's going on at your feet. Just think about it a little bit. So now what I want you to do is we're going to test your limits of stability. So how far Without moving your feet, how far can you shift if you were to go to the left? How far can you go? You should feel the, the outside border of your left foot has got a lot more weight on it, and the inside border of your right foot has more weight on it. Okay, come back to the center. Feel that weight. Feel how it goes, distributes evenly on both feet again. And then shift your weight over to your right. 
feel all the weight go onto the outside of the right foot and the inside, the instep of the left foot. Come back to the center. Let's go forward, not on your tippy toes, but to the balls of your feet so that you feel some, so you still have your heels kind of like just barely in contact with the ground. And then go back. We can't go back as far as we go forward. We have those long levers of, of a foot and our toes in front of us that we don't have very much behind us, so we're not gonna go back very far. And now let's just do little circles. So we've gone to all the sides, so now we're gonna do little circles. So you're feeling the weight go from one foot to both feet on the front, go into the other foot, both feet on the back, reverse directions, go the other way. If any of you were here for last month's um, Qigong session, which was really great, I, I, I sat in to listen to that one and it was really, really fascinating and, and, and I love um, Qigong Tai Chi. I, we use that in therapy sometimes too, but not nearly to the extent that she was so knowledgeable. But um, the whole time that we were doing the exercises with her, I was just thinking like, wow, some out of sensation, some out of sensation, this is so great. Uh, and that's, that's what we're doing here. So this is just a way you can kind of like, and the, the Tai Chi and Qigong really takes it even more advanced to really increase where your awareness is. But this is just, just increasing your, your input and feeling where your feet are, where the weight is over your feet, and what your balance reflexes are like. The most difficult one, the most difficult one is going backwards where you go and then you can't stop yourself. Um, and the, the reason for that postural instability with Parkinson's is very um, different, but, but it's something that a lot of people have with age. And, and if we see that with anyone who has postural instability with leaning backwards, um, then we, we know that that's something we need to work on. So um, if you feel like these are challenging for you when you're standing and trying to do these exercises, if you feel like you feel a little bit unsteady when you do it, um, I think this is a great exercise to do. It's very, very simple. I like to have people do it in their houses, like backed into a corner. So you're not actually touching the walls, but you know that you have a wall on each side as a corner to catch you. So that way, especially the backwards direction, if you started to go, you could just automatically grab onto those walls and you're not gonna fall back and conk your head. But I think it's a great exercise, like waking up, um, well, not, not if you don't have your meds going yet in the morning, but like before you get out for an activity, you can just kind of wake up your somatic sensation, rocking from side to side, testing where your limits are so that you, you're increasing your awareness and your ability to sustain yourself at a limit. So go as far as you can to one side and just hold it and count for two or three seconds. Am I in control? Do, can I work on this? And then go to the other side, go as far as you can. Am I in control here? Um, it's just a nice way to kind of warm up your system before you do other exercises too. Okay, do we have any questions on these exercises that we've done? Hey Shelly, do you think it's best to do these barefoot to start and then progress to wearing shoes or does it matter? That's a great question. Um, you can do both. In fact, it kind of depends if you're a barefoot person or not. I think it's a good idea to kind of do it with both shoes on and with, with no shoes on so that you're getting, you get all that solid contact, especially if you wear big, thick running shoes, like sneakers that have big, thick soles, you're not getting all that input. You're right, Callie, you're not getting all that um, impact that you would with the bare feet. So you can start with the exercises with bare feet. So you're getting, you've got no barrier between your foot and the ground and you're feeling your weight, you're feeling the surface underneath you. Um, but then if you're a shoe person, like I'm at my house, I'm not a shoe person. I'm a barefoot girl. So I would do more of my exercises barefoot because a lot of times I'm barefoot. Um, but if you are a shoe person and you really don't like to have your shoes off, then you need to do exercises with your shoes on as well so that you're practicing in both scenarios. Mm -hmm. Good question, Kelly. Anybody else? Okay, so the what we should do now is to practice a few, I wanna do sitting power moves because you all should be experts on power moves. I thought maybe we could do some sitting power moves with our eyes closed. Everybody think that's like, give me the jazz hands, yay, that sounds exciting. <laughs> 
Okay, so find yourself in a spot where you could do um, the seated power moves. I'm gonna scoot myself back. All right, everybody ready? Let's do power ups. So, so, so try it with your eyes open first which is what you should, do. you should be able to do um, very easily. Um, and then we're gonna try it with eyes closed, okay? Still situating. We'll give everybody a little bit more time to get situated. You didn't know that you, on your, your evening off from the power gym activities, you were still gonna be doing your power moves, did you? <laughs> okay. So let's try a power up. So everybody's going down, eyes open, and then come on up. All right, now let's try it with your eyes closed. Just do one, just do one, ready? Eyes closed, go down. Come on up. And open your eyes. Did it feel different than the way you do it in class or with your home exercise program to do it with your eyes closed? It's a little crazy, isn't it? So let's try five of them. Ready? One. You can shout out loud too. Do your voice boost. Two. Three. Four. Five. Okay, how did that feel with the eyes closed? <laughs> it's different, isn't it? Okay, so um, if you could check with your therapist if you're, if you're doing therapy at home, but if balance is one of the, the big problems for you, I think doing some, um, okay, um, I think doing some exercises with your eyes closed would be a great idea. Um, cause it, you can feel automatically with just the one power move that it makes you feel a little bit different. Okay. So now let's try the power twist. Everybody ready? So first one with your eyes closed to you, remind yourself what it feels like eyes closed. Ready? Go. Twisting. And open. And the other side. Twist. And open. All right. Ready to do some with your eyes closed? Let's just do one with eyes closed, see how it feels. Ready, close your eyes, go. Open, open, all right. How do we feel with that one? It's a little different, especially with your shifting your body from side to side on the chair, it feels a little different. Let's try five of them again with the eyes closed, with the, the twists, everybody ready? Okay. Open, open, that's one, two, open, three, open, four, five. All right, feel a little different on that one too with the eyes closed, everybody okay? <laughs> it's good, huh? Okay. And then let's do um, tilts. I'm gonna go down with my elbow onto my, my knee, but you guys can go all the way down if you want to. Okay, come up, go to the other side. Okay, this one, when you do it with your eyes closed, make sure you feel, um, if you don't, if, if it's gonna feel like it's too weird to go all the way down to the ground, make sure you just go onto your elbow. If this one is not one that you've done with your eyes closed before, okay? So just kind of explore that before we do a bunch of them. So go down and come back up and then try the other side. And if you're really, really adhering to the power, um, the power moves and if you want to if you're turning your head to look 
you got your hand open wide and you're turning your head to look, you're getting even more of that vestibular input. All right, so let's do five of them. Everybody ready? Here we go. Down, up, down, up. That's one. Up, down, up, two, up, three, four, and five. Look at all those power moves. You guys know your stuff. How are we doing? How'd that one feel? A little funky with the eyes closed? Yeah, but good, but a little bit funky with the eyes closed. I love it. <laughs> um, so again, with your, you could throw this in when you're doing the um, exercise program at home even. Do a few of them with your eyes closed. Um, and this can be done in any position. We're choosing to do the seating, the sitting ones today, of course, because this is the safest way for us, us to do this in a Zoom group meeting. But if your program at home is to do them in, uh, to do standing exercises and do them in other positions, um, even the supine or, or the prone exercises, you can do them with your eyes closed just to see how it feels. But before you would do them standing, uh, make sure you've got someone with you to make sure that your balance is going to be okay. And I don't want anybody that, to um, throw your balance off and have a fall because you're practicing doing things with your eyes closed <laughs> if it's uh, too challenging for you at this time. Okay. All right. Um, let's try the stepping. Everybody, I, I know home chairs are not the same thing as, as um, chairs in the gym. So um, do your best if you're sitting on a couch to do the step. You might hear my dog, she's over here telling you guys, good job, keep going. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna do the stepping out and bring it back in and out and in. That one may have been with your eyes closed, open, but let's try it with your eyes closed. Just, just one with your eyes closed. So you're going forward, lift that leg up and bring it back in and the other leg. Okay, there was one. Ready for five? If you're in your house and nobody's around, shout it out. Nobody, nobody's around to know what's going on, but do your do your, your voice boosts the way that your therapist would be so proud of you. Everybody ready? Eyes closed. Let's go for five. One. Second leg. Two, two, three, three, four, four, five, five. How do we do? All right. Still moving on power moves. I love it. <laughs> all right. So it's a little different feeling with your eyes closed for all of those movements. That is the name of the game. That's what we're working on today. So, um, so we did some specific exercises that were just for your vestibular system. Like if you had had one of those things we talked about, the BPPV, uh, that inner ear, the crystal problem, or the, um, the neuronitis where you had the infection of the inner ear, that would be those like the VOR exercise like this, or the standing one where you're moving your head side to side. Um, those are more specific just to the vestibular system. Um, and then when we do the power moves with your eyes closed, you're still using all of your 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 information. Um, you're using your vestibular system more enhanced because your eyes are closed, but you also have that somatic sensation coming in too to tell you where your body is in space. So um, if you're having any specific problems um, with a vertigo type issue, 
then you want to talk to your provider to try to figure out what's going on with this vertigo. If it's the disequilibrium, kind of like off balancey feeling, um, then you still want to talk to a provider to try to figure out what's going on, but it's going to be more generalized type exercises to have with the eyes closed, because as you just discovered, exercise with your eyes closed, or it's a whole new world than exercise with your eyes open. And hopefully with, with practice and repetition, you're going to feel a better sense of where you are in space, both when your eyes are open and when your eyes are closed. I think that was the hardest one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the, it, it was such a complex, I mean, the power moves are such complex movements because you're moving so many parts of your body at the same time. Um, so when you have your eyes closed, it makes everything so challenging. But if you have one of those acute problems from the, from the vertigo issues, then those other exercises are really, really hard. If you're not having one of those acute problems for one of the other issues, then they should feel pretty easy, but they might still be a little bit challenging. Okay, I think that's about all that I wanted to tell you guys. Oh, I did um, also want to mention, so specific to Parkinson's, um, there, there, is, there is some research out there that says that inside the brain stem where the, where the vestibular information is processed, so, it, so it, the vestibular information comes from this organ and then it gets sent off into the brain. And then from the brain, it gets um, sent to different places. It gets the reflexively goes to your eyes. It reflexively goes to your neck to help your, like if you, if you start to tilt over, your neck will automatically change direction. Or if you start to fall to the side, it reflexively will cause your body to, to curve, your spine will curve. So this information is processed in the in the brain stem and you've got the reflexes that go but then you also have um it goes to your cerebellum to, to kind of adjust your movements just your general movements it goes to your cere cere cerebellum to make things smoother um, there has been some research out there with parkinson's that say the the central processing nerve parts in, in the brain stem they have found some um, Lewy bodies in inside the nuclear the nucleus for the vestibular organ so um, so Parkinson's so maybe they don't I don't none of the research I found is enough to say like this is what's causing the postural instability like they're not going to go out on a limb and say that but the vestibular system inside not the organ itself but inside the brain where the vestibular system is processed and sent off to different different places, um, there are some Lewy body changes that can occur inside that system. So, so it is something that we don't want to ignore the vestibular system when we are specifically working with Parkinson's, because um, it can it certainly can have some Parkinson's changes inside the system. Um, yeah, so I wanted to make sure I mentioned that because. Um, it's, we talked about the BPPV and the neuronitis, but you actually can have changes inside your vestibular system specific to the Parkinson's disease. Okay, so um, I think that's all that I have for you at this point in time. Is there any, do we have any questions, comments, concerns? Um, hopefully I didn't make any of you dizzy today. <laughs> Anything else? All right. Well, if nobody else has any questions, um, if nobody else has any questions or comments, we'll go ahead and end it. Let's give a big round of applause to Shelly. I absolutely love doing the power moves with the eyes closed, and I'm going to make everyone do that now. <laughs> So thank you again so much for all that information. And thank you everyone for being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. You're welcome. It's nice to see all your lovely faces. Keep up the hard work. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. Great class. All right. Thanks, Shelly. I'll talk to you soon. Okay, bye, Kelly. Bye, everyone.